Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pinstripe Perspective here on SNY, our look at the Yankees farm system. Along with Connor Foley, I'm Sweeney Murdy. Coming up, we'll be joined by Spencer Jones, the Yankees' first pick in this year's draft. Now, Connor, we're at the time of year that based on the draft and performances in season, that publications, organizations like MLB Pipeline rework their prospect lists, and the Yankees have a handful of guys on the top 100 that was recently released. Yeah, so MLB Pipeline, their midseason report, four Yankees made the top 100. Anthony Volpe, Jason Dominguez, Oswald Peraza, and Austin Wells sneaks in there uh, sort of late in the 80s. You know, at the trading deadline, the Yankees managed to hold on to those top guys, uh, but they also dealt a lot from the rest of their top 10 prospect rankings and the pitchers that they had to send away. So you're also seeing, you know, the back half of that top 10 is guys who we haven't really, you know, seen at that kind of prospect ranking level before. And there's also kind of some variance out there as to just, you know, who fits in at that back end of the top 10. And, you know, you mentioned the top 100, a couple of guys the Yankees have traded away in those deals both this year and last year are now representing other teams. So the Yankees farm system is pretty well represented in this latest top 100. Spencer Jones might sneak into that list in the years to come. He is into his first month as a professional in the Yankees farm system after being chosen in the first round of this year's draft. Connor and I had a chance to catch up with Spencer recently. Well, Spencer, I guess the first question is when you're six foot seven and you play baseball, people are just going to naturally start comparing you to Aaron Judge. Uh, you were in high school, I guess, when Judge broke onto the scene with the Yankees. Uh, how much did you pay attention to him? And when was the first time you kind of started hearing people talk about you and him in the same regard, just simply because of your size? Um, yeah, I remember Aaron Judge breaking into the scene when I was in high school. And I always thought it was really interesting because he was, you know, someone that was my size. And that wasn't very common in Major League Baseball at that time. Or at least guys, you know, our size running around playing in the outfield and, you know, playing every single day. So, you know, he's obviously a very special player. And, you know, there's not not as many tall outfielders out there as I'd like to see. But um, maybe someday, hope to change that. I heard comparisons a little bit in like high school but you know you don't really focus on those things you kind of just focus on playing and then sure enough once the draft rolled around and I got picked by the Yankees that one was uh, a fan favorite to bring that comparison up so I'm loving it I think it's fun. Are you able to learn anything from watching you know really tall people like him and Giancarlo and you know even Joey Gallo are you able to like watch some video of those guys and say oh I see I see what's going on there. Um, a little bit. I like to focus more on like their actions in the field because hitting is obviously different for everyone. And um, just being able to see the way that those guys, you know, move around in the outfield and then use their bodies and making plays and putting their bodies in the right positions to throw and that kind of thing is where I um, get most of my information from watching their video. Spencer, as I've talked to people who saw you, you know, in your college days, um, one of the highlights that stood out is they say, tell me there's a ball you hit over the batter's eye at Auburn, which is kind of a prodigious blast. Are there any uh, anything anything in your personal highlight reel that stands out to you as among your favorites? A Corvallis Regional is one of my favorites. Uh, towards the end, that was my last weekend because you know we were down to the wall. Um, we were you know one loss away from going home, and our team rallied to put up um, a couple of good games together to go into Corvallis to a winner winner take all series so that was the highlight of it and obviously the college world series and everything was great too but um yeah i you know there's there's just so many moments looking back on it and since i've been here everything's been moving you know so fast i've been focused on what's in front of me i haven't really looked back and reflected on everything yet Spencer, you also played a little bit on the cape what was that kind of like for your development in terms of you know getting into the wood bat league it's a pretty prestigious league also. So just what was that whole experience like? Um, yeah, I mean, to put it shortly, I feel like that was, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened for me with baseball. It's like being able to go play in the Cape. So my grandparents have a house in Brewster and I used to go to games growing up all the time. So for me, my dream was always to play in the Cape Cod League. I never really thought about College World Series or playing whatever. It's like my dream was to always wind up in the Cape Cod League playing for Brewster staying with my grandparents and um, you know it obviously all worked out last summer I was staying there and playing for Brewster and I had a good summer it was the first time I've been healthy in my college career entirely so 
it was like, you know, all the pressure had been taken off. I was literally, you know, at home with family every single day and go out and play and come home to like a, you know, a family dinner. So it didn't get much better than that at the time of my life. Give me unexpected great things about being tall and also horrible things about being tall. Uh, great things about being tall is uh, standing in crowds, right? I get to look above everyone. I don't need to you know, wade through groups of people to find my friends. I can kind of just hang out above it. Um, not so great things is um, being from California and like going to the beach. All the towels are too short for me. So my legs will be covered in sand if I jump in the water and go sit on my towel. Um, other things like airplanes are kind of an inconvenience, but I mean, I'd much rather be 6'7 seven than 5'7. Seven. No offense to people 5'7, but I like it up here. Spencer, I don't think anyone's really heard the whole draft story from you yet. So when did the Yankees, you know, first show interest in you and what was it like to hear your name called in the first round? Uh, it was special, obviously. Um, so that day was a whirlwind, as you can imagine, uh, because I had a, I had family and friends come over. We had a, we had a big group over. I have a lot of family in um, San Diego, and you know we had people from you know my best friends in elementary school all the way up through teammates I had in college, right? And my high school coaches were there. You know my same hitting coach I've had since I was nine was there, and my grandparents and everyone. So it was a special day for all of us. Um, but as far as um, hearing from the Yankees, I didn't hear until. Um, closer to the closer to the pick, uh, I actually got a text message from Oppenheimer um, during the 24th pick that said, "Hey, enjoy this next one," and that kind of eased my mind a little bit, and uh, you know, kind of made me relax in that moment and be like, "Okay, we're good. We got this taken care of. I can relax now." So, Spencer, you're talking about a month into your professional career now. It's a little bit of a whirlwind going from draft day to where you are now. What's the adjustment like for everybody, even, you know, somebody who's had the experience at a big time college program like you uh, and have made this your life. It's still now going into professional baseball. It's every day. Uh, what's that adjustment been like? For you? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's new, obviously, and it's a new routine and it's a, <clears throat> you know, a new uh, circle of uh, teammates and staff that uh, I've got to get to know and understand the resources that I have available for me to, uh, best take control of it so um you know it's just obviously just it's just new things and for me it's just gonna be feeling out what i want what i don't want and just kind of um yeah getting used to what it's like playing um, six or seven times a week you mentioned a couple times you know how important the defense and base running is to you why why is that stuff so important when you can go out there and you know hit a 450 foot home run if you want to yeah i mean Hitting, obviously, it's like you're not going to go four for four every day. But if you're, you know, nailing in on your defense and base running, that's something you can bring to the table every single game. So um, at this point, it's all about, you know, building up consistency out in the field. And then when I get on the base pass, being able to take the extra 90 feet, and building up an aggressive mentality out there. And so that's what I've been able to take advantage of the most, is just using my instincts as, as well as I can and, you know, just playing baseball hard. Our thanks once again to the six foot seven Spencer Jones. I'm five foot eleven Sweeney Murdy, along with six foot one Connor Foley. Connor, as we look at an alternate angle, the Yankees recently promoted six foot Oswaldo Cabrera to the major leagues. Yeah, I think it, I texted you that day. I was like, if the Yankees want a spark, this is the sparkiest spark option that they can bring up. And I mean, you kind of seen it so far, Sweeney. He hasn't had that many hits. He's been kind of striking out a little bit, but he makes an impact in every game. And, you know, not just an impact, but an impact that, you know, the fans go crazy for, whether it's robbing a home run or slamming his face off the side of the wall to catch a foul ball. It's kind of exactly what I expected from Oswaldo, who just loves, loves playing baseball. Now, the other question at AAA is, there are other players here who might be able to make an impact, and Oswald Peraza has been having a fantastic year. We've been talking about him all season. Yeah, so I think fans are happy with Oswaldo, but they really want to see Oswald come up at some point too. He's still you know, super young. He's just crossed over 100 games at the AAA level. There's still some development that he's going through, and honestly, he's like a sponge down here. He takes it all in. He, he seems totally fine to be getting the instruction and stuff like that. So I, his time will obviously come at some point. 
but I wouldn't worry about the fact that they're just kind of keeping him down here. Well, at some point, Peraza will get the call, at which time we will confirm exactly how tall he is. For Connor Foley, I'm Sweeney Murdy. Thanks for watching Pinstripe Perspective. Make sure to check out our archive on SNY.TV. Thanks for watching.